On that evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Hello and welcome to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us for this show about Pentecost. Then he breathed on them the Holy Spirit and said, Receive men's sins. The Father, the Son, used to be the Holy Ghost, but now it's the Holy Spirit, okay? What... <laughs> What really is that, that, that understanding of what the Holy Spirit is? And I think basically it's the manifestation of God's continuing presence in the world. Years ago, high school, junior class, anybody tell me what the Holy Spirit is? Uh... It's kind of like air. You really can't see it. When it's really strong, you can feel it. But without it, you would die. You go ahead, man. You got it. It's air. You can't always see it. At times, you absolutely feel it. But without it, we're disconnected from God. I laugh. I do this in a studio, and I do this, you know, at least a month in advance. And so a lot of times, I'll go in and always take my time for the Blessed Sacrament, sit with the readings. I think about the gospel. I think about the event. I think about the celebration. I kind of develop in my mind an idea of something that I want. You know, there's no TV monitor here. I don't have a teleprompter. And this isn't all written out. And I'll come in here and I'll read a reading. And all of a sudden, half an hour later, I go, where did that come from? I got hijacked by the Holy Spirit. I mean, I spent an hour sitting there. I spent an hour thinking about that. I thought that this is what I was going to say. I sit down here and open my mouth and I hadn't planned to say that at all. I'm not saying I got God's cell phone number okay and we got a direct line, but I am talking about what happens when you allow God into your life. You know, the other day someone came in and they were saying, I... I don't even know anymore. I, I, I've been Catholic all my life. She said, do you want to know something? I don't think I know how to pray. She said, oh, I, you know, look, you can ask me this, that, and the other, and I can, I can repeat all that back, including the acts of faith, hope, and charity. I know the words. I don't know that if I know how to pray, other than saying words. And you know, there are times where after I get through saying the words, I have to go back and remember, did I, did I say that prayer already? And so I was just saying them. I wasn't really praying them. And one of the things that is your prayer starter kit, which you offer free of charge today, you know, plus shipping and handling, but anyway, your prayer starter kit. You know, all of us got the stuff of life. We all have it. It might be a person, might be a situation, might be a job, 
might be a living arrangement, we all got it. And, you know, I just, I don't see anything getting any different. I mean, I have prayed and I have begged till I'm blue in the face. Nothing changes. Your prayer started, kid. You know what? For a little while, till you get plugged in, till you get in touch with the power source, not that your missile prayers, not that your recited prayers, not that your rosary, not that any of that's not good. I'm not knocking it. But do yourself a favor. Get up in the morning, 15 minutes. I'm going to take the first 15 minutes, because nobody wants to see me at that time anyway, but I'm going to take the first 15 minutes, get me a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever I want, go sit somewhere else. Just be quiet. Oh, let's see. At 8 o'clock, I got to be here. 10.30, I got this meeting. At 2 o'clock, I'm meeting this teacher of my child, and I really, that woman drives me nuts. Go through it. You and God talk about your day. Everyone's got stuff coming up. You know, the expected is usually problem enough, let alone the unexpected. So invite the Holy Spirit to come, come in your day. You know, God, when I walk in to, to, to see that coworker and I've got to correct them about this, that, or the other, help me, Lord, because this person does not take criticism well. And if they mouth off to me, I have no idea what might come out of my own mouth, okay? Take that 15 minutes and you and God walk through your day asking him, you know, just God, whatever I got coming, I'm inviting you to come along with me. And you'd really be surprised at what a difference that makes. You'd really be surprised what a difference daily mass makes. So many people have started off, well, this year, I'm going to make a good Lent. I'm going to mass every morning during Lent. Easter Sunday comes and they decide, I miss it. You know, I, I every day at 6.30, whatever time it was, it just kind of got my head in focus. I just kind of, you know, no, I didn't, you know, go through, oh, the mystery of the sacrifice and, you know, the glory of the transfiguration. I, I, didn't, I didn't go through all that every morning. I just knew every morning me and God were starting out together. And then when God came to me in the Eucharist, it was amazing. My day didn't go any different, but I handled my, my day very differently. Stuff still happens, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not a magic half hour. Stuff still happened, but I was different. I handled it differently. And it's kind of that same concept. I mean, one of the way we have built up daily mass in the parish is encouraging people to make an extraordinarily dedicated Lent and come during Lent. And when they go for those five weeks of Lent, they really miss it after they walk away from it. And they start coming. And it's that same idea that I'm inviting God to walk through my day with me. I'm inviting God to breathe His Holy Spirit upon me. I'm inviting God to take control of my tongue, take, take control of my temper, take control of all this different stuff, and you'd be amazed how, how effective that is. So you don't have to get some great theological manual, and you don't have to go into the catechism chapter and verse and start remembering everything. It's not a bad thing, but that's not what morning prayer is. Morning prayer is that invitation that God is going to be part of me, and God is going to be in me. And when he breathed on the disciples, the Holy Spirit, 
and then said, receive men's sins. Have you ever thought about that? The church is 2,000 years old. And right now, there's only one institution that existed while Christ was still alive that still exists today. All the other empires, all the other dynasties, all the other range, reichs, and everything else, it's come and gone. The Roman Catholic Church existed at the time of Christ and still exists today. Why? I'd love to tell you, well, because we're the perfect church. Thanks for playing, wrong answer. We're an imperfect church. We're an imperfect church that we have a rich history of very holy men and women. We also have a rich history of very sinful men and women. And if the church was dependent upon the Pope, any given personality, any given religious movement of the day or the time of the era wouldn't have happened. But it's that promise. It's a promise of our Lord to be with us till the end of time. And so as we look at what the Holy Spirit means, and I, and, and I loved I love when, when there's an upcoming papal election, okay? Last time when Pope Benedict resigned, I mean, really, there was a morning line in Las Vegas on who had the best chance of being the Pope. And it happened in March, and so <laughs> if you're a basketball fan, <laughs> they had a morning line and they had the sweet Sistine. You know, the March Madness, they have the sweet 16. They actually in Las Vegas had a sweet Sistine. And that was 16 of the people who would be in the conclave, in the Sistine Chapel. And they were sure that one of these 16 in the Sistine would be the new Pope. And you know what? Jorge Bergoglio was not in the sweet Sistine. And I thought that was great. I thought that was great. Because the idea is, is that the Holy Spirit still leads the church and will continue to lead the church. And does that mean that so all of our popes have been great. Read up history. Thanks for playing. No, they haven't been. But God continues to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us and lead us as a church. But he makes that promise that he's going to lead us personally. And I have no idea what that means. I have no idea where he's going to lead us. The best advice I can give you is if you invite Christ to guide you, to lead you, you start your day of prayer, talking about your day, asking God to come with you, all I can say is hold on. You have no idea where you're going to end up, but I promise you this, he won't abandon you. Stay with us. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey's over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. 
So we thank you and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Hello and welcome back to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father By, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. Wow. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. We said confirmation not long ago. I wonder how many kids felt the Holy Spirit come to them. I was confirmed in sixth grade. Boys in their little red gowns, girls in their little white gowns. And the only thing I remember was we got off a half a day of school. That's what I remember about my confirmation. But the gift of receiving the Holy Spirit, we use it. It's in baptism. It's in the Eucharist because it's certainly not me that turns ordinary bread and wine into the body and blood of our Lord. It's the Holy Spirit. The gift of the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles at Pentecost, that's confirmation. And then the anointing of the sick, the conferral of holy orders, and the oil of sacred chrism. It's all around us. But whether or not we open ourselves up to what the Holy Spirit has in store for us. You know, there's nothing more frustrating for myself as a priest than for someone to believe people like me. It ain't no hope. Oh, don't tell me that. Hey, you have no idea what I've done. You have no idea what my past is. And they think it's no hope. First of all, the power of God and the grace of God and the Holy Spirit is not limited to any human limitation. None whatsoever. But the second thing is this. Nor is the power of the Holy Spirit in our own lives. When you've met someone who's just dead drunk, gutter stinky, and not even worth stepping over because there's puke all around them, to see him one day, to see him one day come out of that, and to see him one day have this incredible capacity for, first of all, their own sobriety, but secondly, this incredible capacity to help others and to bring them to the higher power, bring them to God, and bring them to sobriety, you'd be so amazed at what the power of the Holy Spirit can do in our own lives. And let me talk about the ordinary stuff for the Holy Spirit. The ordinary stuff. Every one of us lives with fear. Okay? Anyone who's without fear is without sense. Because if you've got any sense at all, you know in life there are limitations, there are dangers, there are things that we all have to go through or deal with that we're absolutely scared of. And how many times have I had someone get the diagnosis? You got cancer. And I have no idea whether or not you can make it. I have to run some more tests, have to do this. Well, after they leave the doctor, 
they usually come to the priest or their minister. And it's like, okay, you're game? You're, you're going to suit up for this? You're going to get in this game or not? You're going to fold up your tent and go home? Or are you going to let the power of God heal you, restore you? Those people have done it. Their lives are so radically different. They're so incredibly different because this life that they had no respect for or thought it was only here for my pleasure, and now that they came this close to cashing in their chips, man, life is different. Life is really different. People are different. A new day is different. The money, the stuff that I've acquired, that's all different. I'm completely changed by this. You don't understand. I almost died. And God pulled me out of the fire and gave me another chance to live. I ain't going back where I was. I'm not going to live like that anymore. God has let me live for a reason and for a purpose, and he's going to bring me to it. That person's got the Holy Spirit. That person allows the grace of God to take over in their life and lead them where they will. The other day, I'm, I'm coming home. <coughs> A couple of friends of mine out in, in Salt Lake. Hadn't heard from them for a while. I'm kind of worried about them, and I've been thinking about them the last two or three days. Hey, Sue, how you? Oh, I can't believe you called. Here's the story. He just got put into hospice. This is what's going on. That's what's going on. The other thing. Why did I call them? I hadn't called them in, since before Christmas. But for three days, they, you know, they might come to mind, I get busy, come to mind, I get busy. Finally, I said, look, I'm calling them. She needed, we, we talked for 45 minutes. Not a lot to, not a whole lot that we can do about hospice. She needed to cry. She needed to talk about her frustrations. She needed somebody just there for her. Holy Spirit sent me on that phone call. I have no doubt about it. You know, when those things come and people are in your heart, in your mind, in your thoughts, follow up on them. Let the Holy Spirit work. Years ago, Henry Nowen, who was kind of the spiritual guru of my seminary day, you know, he used to say, he said people would always come to him and say, you know, I'm so upset, I have so many distractions in my prayer. And Henry Nowen says, maybe you ought to realize your distractions are your prayer. If you've set aside that time for God, and God keeps bringing this situation, this person, this concern, this fear, if God keeps bringing it into your mind while you're trying to pray to him, maybe he's trying to tell you this is where you need to allow me to be in your life. This is where you need me to allow me to work and manifest myself and make myself known to you in your hour of need. You say you're praying to me, but you don't want to listen to me. You want to tell me everything on your mind. I want to tell you what's on my mind and in my heart for you. That's the Holy Spirit. It's absolutely the, the Holy Spirit. You walk into a situation, I don't want to go see them. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know how to deal with suicide. I, you know, they, they found their 17-year-old hanging. I, I feel horrible. I don't want to call them because I'm scared I'm going to say the wrong thing. I don't know what to do in those situations, but I just can't quit thinking about them because it breaks my heart. I feel so bad. He was such a wonderful kid. 
he grew up with my child and they played together. Go. Go. If you can't keep them out of your mind, you can't keep them out of your heart, the Holy Spirit's saying, hit your wagon, baby, let's go. Three months after the funeral, they call you and say, let's go have coffee. You go have coffee and they say, you know, I, I don't know what I would have done without you. You came by that day and I'll never forget what you told me. And I'm telling you, not that it was easy, but what you told me helped me get over this or get through this. And you go, huh? What are you talking about? I don't even remember saying anything to you. I just remember crying. That's when you get hijacked by the Holy Spirit. That's when the Holy Spirit manifests himself because you're saying, God, I want you to do what you want me to do. And I don't know what that is, but I'm going in. Cover me. That's where the Holy Spirit manifests itself in our life. It's not the little bu you know, bird hovering, and it's not speaking in tongues and falling on the floor, although that's one manifestation. What it is, is having the belief that if I'm doing it for God, you know, God is going to give me what I need. If it's the words, if it's the tears, whatever it is, God, I'm going in, cover me. And God's going with you. And the Holy Spirit manifests itself. And all these things, you know, what a coincidence. I was just thinking about you. I can't believe you called because I just, you know, fill in the blanks. It's not that the Holy Spirit's not active. It's not that the Holy Spirit's not alive. It's just that we don't recognize the Holy Spirit and we don't invite the Holy Spirit into our lives to give us the grace, the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to do the stuff that we don't know how to do. He shows up and we need to show up and we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives via invitation. He's not going to make us do anything. He's not going to force us. But I promise you, baby, when he said, I'm going in, cover me, the Holy Spirit's got you back and always will. We thank you for being with us today. May each day bring you close in your walk with the Lord. God bless you.